These are the Even Realities G1 Smart Glasses. And before I get into all of the problems that I had with them, let me get something out of the way first. These glasses are technologically very impressive because they do something that I have never seen before and I'm a big fan of wearables. That makes them into a really interesting proof of concept. And to put this into context, the Even Realities G1 start at $599. Meta's Ray-Ban smart glasses start at just $299. That's half the price. And I know both of them are fundamentally different products, but they are also both AI smart glasses. So in this video and with this comparison in mind, I will show you everything that's good and bad about the G1s and in the end I'll give you a very clear answer on who should buy them. So let's talk first about what's good. The biggest feature is definitely the displays. As you can see here, there are displays built into the actual glasses and they can project things into your reality, which is pretty wild. And using these displays, you can get notifications injected straight into your vision. And this feels like you are living in some dystopian sci-fi movie but in a good way. You can even control the apps that are allowed to send your notifications, which is great if you don't wanna get bombarded by them. They also almost feel like normal glasses, at least at first sight. And that's very different from Meta's Ray-Ban smart glasses, which have a camera and speakers, and that can definitely make them stand out. But they can do more than just show you notifications. The teleprompter, for example, lets you read text from inside your glasses, and it even recognizes your speech, so it's great rolls automatically, which is super cool. Another cool feature is quick notes, which once recorded show up very prominently on these displays. And you can record them by touching and holding a control on the glasses and these notes definitely use AI, which I could then instantly see in my vision. And this is cool, especially if you have ADHD and anything that's out of sight is usually out of mind. These glasses also feature a dedicated even AI, which you can imagine as a chat GPT bot that answers straight into your displays. There's also navigation, which I haven't tested, and live translations, which is cool, but it is limited to just a few languages. And then the battery life. Despite having displays, it is actually much better than Meta's Ray-Bans. It lasts literally all day long without charging them in between at all. On paper, they sound amazing, right? But of course, there's more to the story. So now let's talk about the things that are not that great. And yeah, there are quite a few. I am simply documenting my experience during the first, well, almost three days now with these glasses, especially after being incredibly excited about them for over a month before they actually arrived. So let's talk about the usability first, because actually using them, I feel is unintuitive. The controls are way back on the tips of the temples on both sides. This is unlike the Meta Ray-Bans, which have their one control on the front right temple. There's also no audio or haptic feedback when you touch the controls. So you can never actually be sure if a touch was registered or not. So I would love to see at least haptic feedback in the next version. And while some people claim that they have used their phones less since they started wearing these glasses, I would have to call bullshit on this because everything with these glasses is one directional. Let's say you get a text from someone. Amazing, you can read it straight away. But then they send you a photo or they react to something and suddenly you have no idea what just happened as the glasses only mirror the notifications on your phone. Another reason that you will grab your phone constantly is that you cannot respond to anything. So on the Meta Ray-Ban smart glasses, at least you can respond to a WhatsApp message or you can just call someone. But wearing the Even Realities G1 makes me feel like there's a useless link in the chain. There's just not enough features to wear them all day long, if that makes sense. Then there are quick notes and recording them requires you to keep holding the control on the right temple, leaving you with one useful hand, which is unlike the Meta Ray-Bans, which you can control with just a word or a trigger phrase. And the editor for these notes on the Even Realities mobile app also allows for all types of formatting, even checkboxes and emojis, which is cool, except none of it is actually displayed on these glasses. Quick notes also only show a certain amount of characters on the dashboard, and there's no way to see more characters. You can tap through different notes, but you can't see more of the same note unless you, again, grab your phone and open the app. 
Plus, on some occasions, the quick note feature would just stop recording, and then everything I said before then got lost. There's also a 30 second recording limit, but no way to see how much time you have left. So after 30 seconds, the recording just stops. Next up, let's talk about the actual notifications. So there's multiple ways to set them up. The first way is that you can have them collected into your dashboard until you toggle through them by tapping the left side control. This works, but it's a bit too complicated for me. The other way, and that's how I use it, is showing notifications straight away without needing to trigger them manually. So you see all your phone notifications immediately in front of you. This does work very well, except that sometimes for some reason, especially Especially when someone would send me a lot of messages in quick succession, some of them would get lost until, again, I returned back to my phone. And the same was true for single notifications. Sometimes I could hear my phone vibrate from a WhatsApp message, for example, but the notification never showed up on the glasses. But let's talk about the actual displays, because as I said, they are very impressive and I still don't really understand how they work. They're probably the best thing about these glasses, because they use some type of projection technology that is invisible to the human eye. I still haven't figured out how they work. But while you can adjust the display brightness, which works great while you're inside like I am right now, if you are out on a sunny day, even the maximum brightness will make you question if they are even turned on because you can't see it. And the green light from the displays themselves is definitely visible from the outside in both dark environments and during the day from the right angles. You can even see it in the mirror sometimes, which is super weird. And also, don't be fooled by anyone saying that they don't look like smart glasses. Granted, if you're walking around outside, they will not get any attention. But anyone that's actually talking to you will clearly see that there's something going on here. And then let's talk about the Bluetooth connection, which is used to communicate between these glasses and your phone. This was very unexpected because both of these displays have their own connection and you can see them being connected at the same time on your phone. Generally, this shouldn't cause any issues, but what I have found consistently, at least on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, is that when I am wearing an Apple Watch, a Whoop Fitness Tracker, an Ultra Human Ring, and I'm wearing these glasses and then trying to listen to music, for the first time ever, they started stuttering and even dropping the connection. This has never happened before, and it still doesn't happen if I don't wear the glasses as well. So I wonder if having too many connections at the same time may cause this issue. But weirdly enough, it doesn't happen on the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses either, so I don't know what that's about. Plus, opening the app on my phone, I was also frequently presented with a Bluetooth reconnecting message. The glasses would sometimes just show a Bluetooth icon in the dashboard, not actually being connected to the phone despite Bluetooth being turned on and me wearing these glasses. So it looks like these glasses lose their Bluetooth connection very often. It does feel like reopening the app does work, but that's just not something that I want to do all day, you know? But here's the thing. The main reason that you wear them is your dashboard, because it shows your time, your date, your weather, your next calendar entry, and a pinned quick note, which all is really, really cool. You set it up by basically choosing a degree to tilt up your head and then it shows up right here. But the same thing is true when you just like lean back on your couch or just lie down on your bed. The dashboard also doesn't take 100% of the height of these internal displays. You can actually move it up and down inside your vision with the Even Realities mobile app. Just note that the lowest three levels seem to make the dashboard a bit blurry or fade out at the bottom, which makes them unusable. There's also almost no customizations yet. So you can enable or disable the calendar or the quick notes, but there's no way of replacing the one or the other with something else. But now let's talk about the main reason that I bought the Even Realities G1. I was really hoping that the teleprompter will be an absolute game changer when recording videos outside, while vlogging for example, without needing to repeat myself a million times in the process. I am using a teleprompter right now to record this video and I wish that these glasses would have made it possible for me to do the same thing while outside or traveling. And while I have to give them credit for the feature itself, which works incredibly well, it 
isn't quite what I was hoping for. I can see how this teleprompter could be incredibly useful for being on stage, having talking points, or presenting something where eye contact isn't important. Another feature that we briefly have to touch on is the AI assistant, or even AI. Just like for the quick notes, you have to touch and hold for the duration of the question, and then it says even AI listening. Unfortunately, there's no trigger word like on the Meta Ravens, and that's unfortunate because it made me not use this at all. When it comes to actually wearing these glasses, they're not bad at all. They're not particularly heavy, but I do think that most people will need to bring them to an optician to get the perfect fit. Even Realities actually has a help page called Comfortability in which they refer to a video that you can show to your optician. And for me personally, while they definitely need some adjusting, I was able to wear them more or less comfortably for three full days now with just two exceptions. The first one is that they left marks on my nose, which I could probably fix by adjusting them. But much more importantly, when trying to listen to music with my AirPods Max, these large temples on the side, which just press into my head, giving me literal headaches after like 45 minutes. There are more issues to talk about, like the clip-ons that turn your glasses into sunnies, but they feel incredibly flimsy, or that there's a Reddit post that talks about another pair of sunglasses that very mysteriously uses the same display tech and software, which is super weird. But the biggest issue of the Even Realities G1 smart glasses is this. They don't do much. Yes, you can see your notifications, you can take notes, you can translate things, navigate and use a teleprompter. Plus, you have the limited AI assistant. But that's it. And to borrow a line from a news article that I read about them, the hardware delivers on the promise, although software may not be ready for the world to adopt this sci-fi future just yet. And I couldn't agree more. Hardware-wise, apart from the usability, these glasses are incredibly impressive. But the only thing that could make these glasses actually useful would be an open system. Something like a small app or a widget store that would allow you to put more things into your vision. Imagine being able to flip through crypto or stock prices, news headlines, or even read articles. So with this not being a thing, the Ray-Ban Meta smart glasses are, in my opinion, much more useful, despite not having screens, at least for now. You can talk to them, you can take photos and videos, you can ask them to explain things, translate things, listen to music and audiobooks, you have surprisingly high quality phone calls and all without touching your phone or even the glasses themselves. So unless you're a tech enthusiast that wants access to the latest and greatest, these glasses are not for you. For everyone else, get the Ray-Ban Meta Smart Glasses instead and for them, I have a review right here.